joining me online now is Julia Hartz. Julie, along with her husband, Kevin, are the co-founders of Eventbrite. It is a, a Web 2.0 ticket, uh, I guess, ticket selling application. I, I have to ask you right off the top, how are you guys different than Ticketmaster? Because if there's one company in the world that drives me absolutely nuts, it's Ticketmaster. So you don't charge me to print my own tickets, do you? <laughs> Well, I think fundamentally our difference in uh, b between really any sort of incumbent ticket player is that is in our mission. Our mission is to democratize the ticketing industry. So it's to take all the types of technology out there that lies within, you know, things that we're talking about now and mobile and social and big data and the cloud and also all the types of web tools that are out there. We package it in a really easy to use service that anybody can use to sell tickets online to an event. It's completely self-service. Uh, it doesn't take uh, any sort of uh, knowledge of, of technology really to get started. And you can be selling tickets in minutes. So I think I think I just said a lot of things that are different. From, well, let's let's Ticketmaster. start with the, real, the beginning. So the, for you can start at the absolute basic level, which is if you have a small event, I you're giving a, a speaking engagement, or you have just you know 20, 30, 40 people. Uh, numbers that would not historically allow you to engage in any uh, in any sort of formalized ticket process, you can actually start to use your services at that level and then and then grow. Right, you can have a free meetup. You could be gathering, you know, ten people around a common passion or interest. You could be teaching a yoga class, or you could be throwing a hundred thousand person salsa congress. All of those things live harmoniously on one platform, and that's sort of the beauty of this disruptive technology that really democratizes an industry. Is that it doesn't matter who you are, what size of event, what type, even if you're charging or not, Eventbrite is a solution that works for everybody. Okay, let's. Let's w just walk me through what an organizer might do. And let's let's say it's going to be uh, that you're teaching a class. You're teaching a class. I, I, I'm a great barbecuer. So I'm teaching a barbecuing class, which is going to be awesome because I'm going to show my famous beer can chicken. So awesome. what do I do then to organize the event? What's the process that I go through and the benefits that I get along the way? Great. So you'd come to Eventbrite. You'd immediately start entering in your event details, the title, the details of your event, where it is, when it is, who you are. There's an ability to move quickly through that process on Eventbrite, but you can also spend some time customizing your page. So let's say you have an awesome logo that showcases your beer can chicken. Yeah. You can upload that. You can tweak the colors and the style of the page to really match your brand. Um, then you publish your event. That can literally take five minutes. And that the next part is really the engine of Eventbrite. It's how you promote your event. So let's say you, you know, obviously you probably have a lot of fans of your beer can chicken. So you have a built in audience, um, but let's say you don't, you know, by publishing Eventbrite um, on Eventbrite, you're able to send your event out to a whole host of syndicated event sites. So places that people go to find things to do. It also lives on Eventbrite, which is becoming a destination for people to come to find things to do. And okay. then it also gets search engine optimized. So that means if somebody is Googling beer can chicken making on a Friday night, your event page is actually going to show up in the top results because of all the magic we do on the back end. So there's a lot of invisible tactics that we take to help promote a public event. But then there's also things that are that are familiar to maybe the the average web user, which is we, you know, have so many different touch points in which you yourself can be promoting your event on social channels, but also most importantly, people interested in your event or your your fan base and your attendees can act as event promoters on your behalf. They can share the event online. They can promote it on Twitter. And we see real results that track back to uh, how much revenue is made by the event organizer, or how many visits are, are sent back to the event page. So more than just the, 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 uh, the, the, the support of managing the tickets and, and actually handling all of the different administrative functions, which is a huge yeah. deal, you folks have really stepped up the game as far as incorporating social media marketing, helping me promote, actually helping your clients promote their activities. And that's all pretty much gratis because you're only paying based on per ticket sales, right? Exactly. Our only revenue source is the ticket fee, which is 2.5% plus 99 cents. Now, we don't charge if your event is free. It's based on the ticket price. So oh. if you want to host a free event, it's free. 
Eventbrite is completely free to use. And I think that comes back to the fundamental point of helping people sell more tickets and host more live experiences. And that comes back to our mission, which kind of separates us from the rest. What if it's a fundraiser? What if it's, a, what if it's for a charity? So we have a special fundraising rate, which is, um, is is a little bit less than what we normally charge, and that's for nonprofits who are raising money. Okay. But we find that actually the value proposition is not necessarily in the in the sort of uh, discounted fee. It's more in how we bring people to that event. Yeah. And what we try to express to nonprofits is it's you know. Hosting an event to raise money can seem like a pretty big task and a pretty hard way to raise money, but it's actually beyond raising money, it's raising the awareness of the nonprofit and it's getting people to understand your mission and be sort of offline with you and understanding what you're about and be, and sort of building that affinity with your with your nonprofit. Let's talk about the types of events that you support because obviously for the you know things like these classes and that that it would be perfect but they're all kind of festival seating type arrangements. What do you do about for like a, a dance school or something like that that might have actual registered seats that you have to assign people to? So right now Eventbrite is focused around general admission events okay. and you know reserve seating is certainly something that we're looking at. We definitely want to redefine how reserve seating is handled and redefine the box <laughs> office. So yes. you know that's sort of back in our what I would call our research lab right now. But uh, right now we're focused on on general events mission. where no matter what ticket you buy, you know you're you're entering the event, you're sort of all on the same same level and that is a huge market, if you can imagine. Oh, it's still, um, yeah, it works for trade show. It works for any festival seating environment, any trade show type environment, that sort of stuff as well. What about uh, virtual events? Are you doing anything in the space of non-physical events? We do. We we've supported webinars from the from the beginning. For example, I think that you know for Eventbrite, it's a seamless integration. There's there's so many ways in which you can customize the messaging and the integration points to a webinar, and that to us is you know, just as much of an opportunity as any. We have some really great stories, actually, of Eventbrite users who um, had been doing their jobs sort of the hard way, traveling around the world, you know, teaching these classes, and were sort of missing out on life. Yeah. And so they, they decided to, you know, redefine their business and make their business more of an online virtual type experience. And they used Eventbrite to build that engine, to, to really build their base. Wow. That, uh, I, I think that... If for anybody who's ever put on any sorts of seminars and webinars, which I've done, I've been a speaker in a lot of a lot of events. That organizational, uh, the organizational challenge, but the marketing challenge, that to me is the is is the biggest challenge because it's such a there's such a fear factor in deciding. Okay, I'm actually going to put this event on because you have a lot of money up front before you ever collect any money down the back end. So it's a it's it's a quite a a, a challenging entrepreneurial experience. Yeah. It is. It's also anxiety ridden. I mean, oh, yeah. anybody who has actually hosted an event knows that that is full of anxiety, just like you know you, you just mentioned. But where Eventbrite supports those those points where somebody would actually feel anxious is we support the promotion of a, an event, not only on the ways that I that I told you about, but also providing ways for um, you know, maybe a more savvy marketer to think about how to um, create dynamic pricing or how to create discount codes or how to create affiliate tracking links to get you know your supporters to really get the word out about your event and see how much traffic they're actually sending you all of those things are baked into the product and you know essentially are free as you mentioned because we're only charging that fee if you if you actually succeed and sell tickets which is where our interests are aligned and so I think that's really where we help support the sort of do-it-yourselfer and the startup entrepreneur in hosting events. Okay, let's take it downstream a little bit. So the the person buying the ticket now, they go, they click on an Eventbrite link, a uh, link that you guys create, so you've got a good shopping cart experience. Uh, in the past, I've registered for events or purchased tickets. The, uh, the code comes to my smartphone. I can print the ticket off at no charge. What a mm -hmm. concept. Um, <laughs> so, so, but I, so, so now the organizer has a, they've got a database, I guess, of all of the different registrations. They've got a, what's the, uh, you know, we're now approaching the event. What tools are there for the organizer to make sure that their event runs smoothly, the right people get in, and they can handle all of those logistical things at the time of the event? So that's really where mobile comes into play. You know, Eventbrite is a technology company first and foremost. We're in the heart of Silicon Valley. Our roots are steeped in technology. So our commitment is to always be on the bleeding edge of where technology is taking us. And mobile is where we're going, right? So that, yeah. you know, this 
we're at the sort of in- intersection of these really exciting trends. And the day of event is all about mobile because mobile provides the opportunity for an event organizer to turn their smartphone into a barcode scanning device. It's a free application you download. If you have a smartphone, Android or iPhone, you, you can use that to actually scan the barcodes that are built into our PDF tickets that people get via email and print at home. Or the attendee now has the option of pulling that barcode up on their smartphone and you have a smartphone to smartphone magical union that you know creates a really great entry into the event it keeps the those lines moving it keeps everybody feeling great about the event the entry is the first impression that an attendee has to an event yes. so it's very important for us to create a delightful experience not just one that is efficient but also is delightful so you can imagine people's reactions when somebody whips out an iPhone and scans their ticket. Um, there's sort of that wow factor. We also allow event organizers to now capture day of event revenue. So typically yeah, um, at the door sales yeah. happen via cash box or didn't happen at all. And what we've done is we've built a at the door box office on the iPad that allows anybody to scan credit cards or accept cash, but most importantly, capture the attendee information. Now they can enter a name and an email that just gets placed into the back end of Eventbrite and now is you know, on that attendee list so that the event organizer can market future events to that person instead of just having them be an anonymous person that showed up at the door. And that's a, that's a hardware and software solution, but the hardware is very inexpensive. Right, the hardware is very inexpensive. We actually have, you know, solutions that we ship out to larger events. Um, but you know, the, the the basis of really that democratization is building building an app that integrates with hardware that people are already purchasing. Right, so, so you so don't have to go I- out and buy huge yeah. huge new setup for a box office or spend a lot of money on scanners that really are obsolete anywhere else in your life. You actually, it's built into things that you use as a consumer, you know, and you can utilize them as an organizer. So as an event organizer, I have my iPad for, is it $10, I think? I buy a barcode scanner for, or a scanner, uh, a scanning pad from you that I can swipe the credit cards. And then the transaction all occurs through PayPal. So I don't even need a merchant account or anything, right? Exactly. And essentially, if you if you really want, want to get down to the nitty gritty, this entire experience is, is free of charge to the event organizer. You know, attendees are are somewhat accustomed to paying fees. Unfortunately, they're usually exorbitant fees. Well, mm-hmm. at Eventbrite, we've, you know, tailored that down to a to a digestible amount that the event organizer can pass on to the attendee. And you and cap so, that, don't you? You cap the amount of, of the charge. At, is it ten dollars? We do yeah. cap the amount at, at nine dollars and ninety five cents. So it doesn't matter how how big of a ticket you're you're selling. So you see kind of higher ticket prices and things like conferences. Um, we're not charging, you know, a sliding scale there. We're actually yeah. capping our fee. There you go. Now the uh, oh, I did have one other brilliant question along the box of this the around the scanner, but I but I but I've lost it. So uh, I'm All just right. I, I gotta admit <laughs> I, I've used your service. I like I like the the uh, it allows a small independent uh, organization to look big. I mean the bottom line is that you're that you're that you're it's outsourcing at its best. You're marshalling somebody that's an expert in one field and allowing you to concentrate on your content. Oh, I know what I was going to ask you. I noticed when I was looking at your uh, at your uh, app for uh, at your iPad app that you can actually add some additional items as well, additional revenue items. You could add like a meal, a lunch, or probably parking or a T-shirt. So you can right. do that and capture that additional revenue around the event at that moment. Exactly. I mean, you know, at Eventbrite, we try to focus on on what we do best, which is really helping the event organizer sell tickets to their event. But we understand that things like merchandise are usually intrinsically tied to a ticket. So an entry into an event is a perfect sort of lead generation for an, a consumer to be buying merchandise around that event. And it only makes sense that we would ca- we would help the event organizer capture that additional revenue. Um, you know, but for us, it's all about that that seamless experience. So not having two different softwares doing two different things around the same experience. Julia Hartz is the co-founder of Eventbrite. She must be very proud of her baby. You have you have two babies though. <laughs> I have three. I have I have two two babies at home, and and then Eventbrite is my first baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's Eventbrite.com. There'll be links to our site. Thank you so much for your time, and, and best of luck. Thank you.